Hello and welcome to our latest fund update on the Fidelity Asia Fund. I'm Gary Monaghan, Investment Director for Fidelity's Asia Equities business, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Portfolio Manager Anthony Schrong. In today's update, we're going to cover recent performance, key changes to the portfolio, and also positioning given Anthony's views. Anthony, welcome. I want to start with recent performance. Um, so far this year, performance has been pretty good relative to the benchmark. So, so what has been driving that? In terms of the recent performance, I just feel it's a reversal of last year uh, where there was pockets of underperformance in the portfolio. So if you look at turnover, uh, being quite low with the fund, stock holding has been very high compared to last year. And in my mind, uh, I think a fair bit of it has just been the reversal of market sentiment. Um, you know, you saw the China reopening in the back end of the fourth quarter of last calendar year, so late November, early December. And you also saw a bit of a rebound in, in the technology space. So the way I characterise it, uh, just a bit of a reversal of, of some underperformance of last year. Um, Anthony, the biggest change or one of the biggest changes to the portfolio so far this year has been the, the addition of Samsung Electronics, um, which is in the portfolio for the first time ever. Could you just give us an overview of, of why you own Samsung Electronics and, and also more specifically on the semiconductor sector, which is now a significant position in the portfolio? Sure. So if you look at the semiconductor industry, it's going through a fair bit of pain at the moment. Um, inventory destocking, a lot of negativity from the sell side. Sentiment is very negative and that's one of the things I look for as part of the investment process. But when we look at the fundamentals, it's also a cycle. Um, and eventually the cycle will turn and what we're seeing is a lot of discipline by the producers. So Micron, SK Hynix, Samsung Electronics, all cutting production, cutting capex. Um, and Samsung Electronics was the last to announce capex cuts which got the market quite excited. Uh, when I look at the valuation, so the last part of the process, um, very attractive levels. And buying at these levels in the semiconductor space you know, has been generally a money-making idea. So I think things stack up in the fund's favour. So that's why the, the position is maintained in the semiconductor industry. So talking specifically about Samsung Electronics now, the reason why it was added to the portfolio in the first quarter of this calendar year was to really get increased exposure to the portfolio, to that thesis around the semiconductor industry. As a portfolio manager, I have to manage the portfolio to certain constraints, and one of those is the 540 rule. So basically the five positions that are the largest in the portfolio can't be more than 40% of the fund's NAV. As a result, can't take SK Hynix beyond the 5% level, given I'm very happy with what's already in the 540 bucket. Samsung Electronics was introduced to get greater exposure to semiconductors, as I mentioned earlier. So when I looked at last year, I uh, felt like a lot of the good work that had been put into investing in semiconductors, i.e. alpha generated by SK Hynix from time to time, was detracted by the underweight in Samsung Electronics. So at the moment, uh, more exposure to semiconductors, meaning going forward, the fund should start to extract greater alpha from what I think is a good investment thematic. Now, Anthony, if we look at the sales this year, nothing stands out individually at stock level, but on aggregate, you've reduced exposure to China consumer-related names like Focus Media, Trip.com and Yum China. Are you concerned about the Chinese consumer recovery stalling? In terms of post-reopening, I've been quite sceptical on the strength of a consumer rebound, just given the severe psychological stress that they've been through um, over the last 12, 18 months. Also, just the depressed levels of income uh, that they achieved in China. For example, there was no such thing as a stimulus check. Uh, so they had a lot to overcome. Um, what we saw was some steep rebounds in some select stocks that you mentioned, such as Yum China, Trip.com, Focus Media. Risk reward um, was not as favourable as fourth quarter of last calendar year, and the fund took opportunity to start downweighting in those select names. I think Focus Media um, stood out um, a little bit differently just because it was the largest position in the fund. And again, given the outperformance that got extracted in the first quarter, um, you know, we're, we're approaching, if not going over the 10% uh, maximum issuer limit. And so there's some forced divestment there as well related to that name. India remains a large underweight for the portfolio. And we spoke about this in previous webinars that you find the market quite expensive. Um, you still hold a significant position in HDFC Bank, but what will it take for you to increase exposure to India? 
India, in my mind, still remains an expensive market um, given the returns and margin profile on offer. So what will it take for the fund to increase the weighting in India? Uh, pure and simply is stock-specific hiccups that we see along the way. Uh, what we've seen year to date is a bit of a hiccup in the IT services sector. So names that should come to mind would be things like Tata Consultancy Services, Infosys, uh, have been sold off or stock specific reasons and in some respects a bit of industry specifics um, relating to Infosys. So that particular area of the market is a focal point for me right now. Has the fund invested just yet? No it hasn't but to answer your question what will it take? And um, what we've seen in the past is stock specific hiccups predominantly. We often spend time in these webinars and, and fund updates uh, talking about the top positions in the portfolio, which, which haven't really changed that much in the last couple of quarters. So, so I'd like to spend some time, Anthony, on some of those positions that have been long held and sit outside of the top 10. Um, so let's start with China Merchants Energy Shipping. You know, what do they do and why are they in the portfolio uh, within your investment process? Basically what China Merchants Energy Shipping does is a few things, container shipping, bulk carrier shipping and crude carrier shipping. So the vast bulk of the business is crude carrying followed by bulk and a small amount of container. So what's the thesis behind it? Basically supply demand dynamics around the vessels themselves. So what we're seeing with crude carriers is basically all-time record low order book as a percentage of global fleet size. Um, you know, shipyards are prioritising other vessels such as container ships, LNG vessels, etc., which are higher margin. Um, and as a result, uh, what you're seeing is an ageing profile of crude carriers globally, which was already pre-existing, and we think will likely get exacerbated over the next two to three years, leading to better pricing for those vessels, and I think something that's not fully captured um, in the current share price. So that's why China Merchants Energy Shipping is in the portfolio. Uh, and next it's the same question for BOC Aviation. So what's BOC Aviation in the portfolio? Basically it's a top-notch aircraft lessor and what we're seeing in the market post-COVID is very strong rebound in air traffic and constrained delivery of aircraft, predominantly the narrow bodies which seem to be quite favoured by airlines at the moment. So the expectation is that in the next one to two years you're likely to see uh, a good firming in lease rates for those aircraft translating through to above profit growth for, for BOC Aviation, i.e. above market expectations and valuation is quite reasonable. Now Anthony, that's some of the stock specifics, and, but how would you characterise the portfolio positioning more broadly? Are there any themes that emerge or are there anything that stands out for you when you look at the portfolio? So I think the things that stand out to me with the portfolio is just the overweight to information technology but more hardware. So that's the semiconductors that we spoke about earlier. It's also equipment providers into the foundry um, sector, so think things like ASML. So that is, is kind of a, a big standout that I see in the portfolio. And again, a lot of negativity towards that sector and I think more than priced in. Another change that I see in the portfolio compared to prior quarters is that the fund is now underweight Taiwan, um, basically through thesis playout and exit of, uh, of a security and downweighting of other securities as share prices have re-rated. Also, what we've spoken about earlier is the China exposure uh, being reduced through some of those consumer names which have also played out. So, from my perspective, let's just call it a, a lower weighting to greater China um, at a country level. And finally, Anthony, where do you see the key risks for, for the portfolio and the market as you look ahead from here? So in terms of the portfolio, the way I think about risk is very much at the individual company level. So again, it's just going through your thesis and thinking about the counter thesis, what could go wrong. So that's predominantly how I think about um, risk with the portfolio. Uh, taking a top down view, uh, you know, one, one of the greatest concerns I have is that interest rates remain too high for too long going into an economic downswing combined with inflation being stickier, so think higher than what the market anticipates. In my view, that could be a 
potentially quite nasty scenario for, for markets in the second half of this calendar year. Anthony, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us today and thank you everyone for listening. If you require any more information in, on this fund or any other Fidelity products, please visit your local Fidelity website or contact your local Fidelity representative. Thank you and goodbye.